Hi everyone and thank you very much for watching, this is me Mr. P and welcome back to another episode in the Proxmox Home Server series. This video is going to be first video in a two-part series and two-part episodes where I'm giving you a demo how I'm monitoring my Proxmox cluster. So let's begin. The first part will be more than like a show and tell where I will explain to you why this screen exists here and in the second part I will give you a demo how to set up Zabbix monitoring system inside the Ubuntu VM that can be hosted on the Proxmox server. So first part, like I said, is going to be hardware. And I do have a cheat sheet already here for me to, for me to, as I was saying, I have a cheat sheet already here to talk about this screen. And pretty much this screen is the reason why this video and the next video exists. Because I had an idea quite a while ago to have a display mounted inside this uh, network cabinet, or you can call it server rack. I'm calling it a galaxy, so inside the galaxy cluster and I was about to purchase the screen, the small size screen that I can attach to the Raspberry Pi and display something or display the statistics where Alec Rowe contacted me via email and asked me if I would like to do a review about this item, about the screen. And I said, why not? I'm basically, I'm looking for this kind of device now to purchase. So please send me the device and I'll have a quick look. So they sent me the screen free of charge and just a disclaimer. They're not telling me what I'm supposed to say about the screen or what I'm not supposed to say. They just asked me just to show the screen, how it performs, and basically the, the application where I'm using the screen. Initial idea was that I will do a video where I'm showing you the screen, how it's attached to the 3D printer, that you can see the printing progress and etc. But my 3D printer is quite neatly um, included into all my home lab already to this Raspberry Pi, and I didn't want to do a bit more, more cabling, etc. So I, I suggested to them that I would use this screen as my monitoring system. So screen arrived and all this project started. Me setting up a screen, 3D printing, and 3D, design, 3D designing, 3D printing the mountain, mountain bracket, and then finding a solution, how I can monitor Proxmox, free Raspberry Pis, free Proxmox nodes, free Raspberry Pis, and everything else. And then I discovered about Zabbix. So this is pretty much the long story short kind of thing, why every, all this this video and the next video exist. But anyway, this video is about a hardware. So I'll focus exactly on the screen. And if I'm, I'm gonna look at the cheat sheet now. So this is the Elecro five inch touchscreen display compatible with Raspberry Pi three and four. I have Raspberry Pi four mounted at the back behind the screen and is powering Raspbian OS. And what you see here, or if a camera can pick it up, this is pretty much the dashboard of Zabbix that is opened inside the browser that runs inside all Raspbian OS. The screen is 800 by 480 pixels resolution. It's not HD, it's not super, super high definition, but it's more than enough for me to just look at the glance and see exactly what's happening with my Proxmox nodes. Even with 800 by 480 resolution, I can see straight away what's going on. And if, let's say I'm on a bad day, I, can actually, I can't actually see because the touch screen, I can just zoom in and I can see straight away that this says Alrakis and other nodes and everything fits in here. Very responsive to a touch, touch inputs, so no problems at all to, in, to um, manipulate the UI. This screen, by the way, has a built-in speaker, and the, the speaker that is, exists is quite useful for me because I'm planning right now to automate something like um, audio, audio feedback, audio alerts. For example, let's say the Alrakis node crashes, stops working, or my Docker VM stops working, or home assistant stops working, I don't know, just something happens to my Proxmox cluster. The speaker can play, let's say, my own voice saying, Alrakis is down, Alrakis is down every five seconds or so, or just notify me, for example, all this, it just temperature goes up slightly more than it's supposed to inside the network box, so you can start, I don't know, playing a fire, fire alarm or something like that, just to indicate that uh, I, this box requires attention and I need to go and have a look what is going on. Or maybe if somebody presses the doorbell, this can actually produce a sound saying that somebody at the door and then screen can switch into the CCTV camera output showing exactly what's happening. So there's a million ways I can do this. And all the ideas is still all, all the ideas just coming into my head. And I, I just, I just very keen to go and start messing around the screen. So Again, thank you, Alec Rowe, for sending me this display. This, this display it basically created the avalanche, created the snowball effect, where more and more ideas is just coming into my head. I just can't, can't wait to start going and messing around. The screen arrived quite neatly packed in a box. 
it took about 10, 10 minutes, not, not even probably 10 minutes to unpack, set it up and everything add it in while I was setting the screen and attaching the Raspberry Pi. I was flashing the SD card, uh, or flashing USB drive as it boots off the USB drive and everything was done in like 10 minutes. I had the screen up and running, instructions is very, very clear to follow with a lot of pictures, it's just showing everything, there's no problem to set it up. Once Raspberry Pi OS was installed and it was booting up and everything was working fine, it was ready to be mounted into the My Network Box. The initial idea was that I will power the screen and Raspberry Pi behind it and everything by a PoE. The, the, uh, in inside the accessory box, the screen arrived with a fan, which I, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of that fan. Um, let me find it now. So this is a fan that's arrived with, or this fan was included into the box. And it is, it is well, it's not heavy, but it's, it's much heavier than usually fans are because it has a heat sink here at the bottom. But the way that this fan is supposed to get mounted on the screen is you attach this two, two wire pin into the back of the screen and then use the thermal pad to stick this on the Raspberry Pi CPU. And that didn't feel right to me because this box or inside this box will get up to 27%, 20 some percent, 20 some percent, 27 degrees Celsius or more in temperature. And summer is probably gonna be even more. I thought that this might just fell off one day, detached from a CPU. So instead of using this, I just stuck um, the PoE hat to the Raspberry Pi 4. So that's why initial idea was to power this using a Raspberry Pi PoE hat and to be mounted on this side here at the bottom right. But then I quickly realized just mounting by here, okay, I need to constantly sort of like just get a bit up just to see what's going on because about 20, one third of the screen, one quarter of the screen was not visible because this edge of this network box. So it's ended up there. So I had to move all the stuff down. If you watched my previous video about me going and showcasing my Galaxy cluster setup, everything was much higher. So I had to move all the shelves, all the, all the one new stuff down just to accommodate the screen. So once the Raspberry Pi was attached to the screen, Raspbian OS is running, everything is fine. The headache, or next headache was to free to design the bracket to add that in. And on the website, that a useful thing, they include the measurements of the actual PCB. And all these six numbers on the page help me to design the bracket, which I can show you now. So this is how the bracket looks like when it's designed. I basically created a 3D model of the screen and then created the bracket around it. If you have a home lab, if you want to mount the stuff, this is the stuff I suggest for you to get. This is a rack studs. They're plastic rack studs and nuts and everything. And they are super amazing. They're so easy to put in and get everything mounted and etc. So here we go. This is the actual rack stud. It goes in in a hole. This is locking mechanism. And you just put the nut on top of it. So if I go here, I obviously I'm not sure if you were able to see from the camera. I don't think so. But seriously, this is best one to that. This is one of the best accessories I purchased for my home lab. So anyway, this is the two of those mounted here and it's attached. And screen just sits here and just constantly 24-7 displays right now Zabbix output. The screen at the back has um, three buttons, backlight, volume up and down. Right now I think volume is set to low or off. So right now it's not producing any audio via speaker. But obviously I think in just increase the volume when I'm gonna start messing around, messing around with the with the stuff. And another thing when I said about my ideas coming into right now, if you can see the LED red, they have LED strip up there, which changes into red if this box or internals temperature by this sensor, which I'm not sure if you can see, but this is the sensor there, detects that the in internals are 27 Celsius degrees Celsius or more the exhaust fan kicks in and it just takes the heat out. And this red color indicates that right now the cooling is happening. And when this goes below 27 Celsius, the light will change into blue, indicates that um, basically it's chilling inside, it's below 27 degrees. And the idea is that when it's go high up, then it needs to cool down. My idea was just to go and put this one, show a fireplace or fire or something with that, like heat. So once the temperature goes up and my idea was to display this fire fireplace and when it goes down maybe show that it's snowing or, or breeze or something like that or even display the actual temperature what's inside that's a Zabbix. Zabbix dashboard can do that another thing what I try to do is play games on it streaming using uh, from a gaming PC getting streamed into this using moonlight moonlight client and sunshine server and it Perfect. I was able to play Forza 4, 
Doom and etc. was basically playing games while, uh, let's say, Seth Cluster getting resilvering, getting resilvered, re or ZFS getting resilvered. You know what I mean? Just you're sitting and waiting here, so why not just go and just play some Doom levels or something? So here we are. If not Ella Crow, I'm not sure if I would even start doing this project. Yes, I was planning to purchase this screen, but I was a bit more. Should I? Should I not? I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I'm not sure if it's not gonna work. And when Alec Road, Alec Road just said we're gonna send you a screen, I knew I need to start doing this kind of project. So screen is up. Thank you very much, Alec Road. It's gonna display all the statistics of my Proxmox nodes or free Proxmox mode nodes, Raspberry Pis, monitoring websites, monitoring temperature or displaying temperature. Sorry, uh, there is many, many, many things you can actually uh, graph using Zabbix. And that's what we'll show you in a part two. Once you finish watching this, thank you very much to stay staying still end of this video. You can find the link in the description below to a part two where you're going to learn how to set up Zabbix. And I think that is it. Once again, thank you very much, Alec Rowe, for sending this display. Thank you very much for you watching this video show and tell. And like always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.